Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Voodoo. When you hear Voodoo, the city of New Orleans isn't too far behind. There are many people who do and have done Voodoo. But do you know there is a queen of Voodoo? That'd be Mary Laveau. Let's get started. Really fast. Isn't this sure cool? Spencer's. Love it. Mary Catherine Laveau was born on September 10th, 1801 in the present day French Quarter of New Orleans, Louisiana. She was born free to her mother, Marguerite Darkantle, who was a free woman of African, Native American, and European descent. Her father was Charles Laveau, who is the son of politician and Louisiana Creole, who are people descended from colonial Louisiana before it became part of the United States during the period of French and Spanish rule, Charles Laveau Trudeau. There's another theory that Charles is actually a free man of color, but this confusion is due to inconsistent spellings of surviving records. Mary grew up Catholic and her childhood life is unknown. Jumping ahead to 1819 when Mary married carpenter Jacques Paris. He was a free man that fled from the Haitian Revolution, which was a successful insurrection by self-liberated slaves against French colonial rule in what was then saint Domune, which is now modern-day Haiti. Jacques is considered quadroon, which is a person with one-quarter African Aboriginal and three-quarters European ancestry. They were married in St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans on August 4th, 1819 by Father Antonio de Sedella, whose Capuchin priest's name was Per Antoine. They had two daughters, Felicity, before they were married in 1817, and it's said that that's why they got married, and Angelie in 1920. It's reported that at some point Jacques, for reasons unknown, disappeared and was later presumed dead in 1820. It was custom at the time that once her husband died, Mary began calling herself Widow Paris. Mary was described as a striking figure. She dressed like a gypsy with a bandana wrapped around her head, wore flashy rings, earrings, and gold bracelets. She always dressed in dark colored dresses that were long and full. Her large hazel colored eyes sparkled like emeralds against her African skin. And it's broadly agreed that she was exceptionally beautiful. With that description, it's not a surprise that she was not single for very long. Soon after her husband's death, sometime before 1826, she met and began a relationship with Christophe Dominique Domini de Galapion. If I mispronounce that, I am so sorry. <laughs> he was a nobleman of French descent and his family, the Lavu Galapion family, lived in the original French Quarter of New Orleans, also known as whatever the heck this is. Vieux Carré. <laughs> Together they had a total of about a measly 15 kids. That's a village. Some documentation say seven kids and that the other eight are grandkids, but we don't know that. Simply regardless, that's still a lot of kids. The children we do know of are Francois Auguste, Mary Lois Caroline, Celestine, Archange, Marie Philomene, and Marie Eloise. Unfortunately, only two survived into adulthood, Marie Heloise, born in 1827, and Marie Philomene, born in 1836. The others are thought to have died from various yellow fever outbreaks in New Orleans between 1817 and 1905, where more than 41,000 people died. Like, this got real bad. I did a little bit of a deep dive. This is insane. In the late 1820s, the death rate in New Orleans was on the low end, 36 per 1,000 people. But in the summer of 1853, the death rate got to an insane one in 15. It is thought that Murray's first two children, Felicity and Angeline, died during this time because their records were lost sometime in the 1920s. Since yellow fever death was all around her, Mary started to dedicate herself to caretaking and healing the sick. Mary became a hairdresser and she mainly did the hair of wealthy families. Now we all know the salon is known as a gossip hub, but Mary had a unique ability to get inside information of her wealthy customers 
customers by not only talking to them, but by listening to the ladies' gossip or from the wealthy family's servants that she would also do their hair for, and they would spill all the tea about the rich white families. Mary used the information she got to help people that sought her advice in personal manners. Many wealthy people and politicians, both black and white, paid Mary for her advice, intervention in certain matters, and even protection against evil energies that was put on them. Mary began to gain profound respect and a reputation in not only her wealth of knowledge in herbs, medicines, and healing remedies, but also for her being a devout Catholic. She started practicing a new religion that many say is the source of her otherworldly mysterious talents, a practice known as voodoo. Now, what is voodoo? It's more than those creepy dolls that you put your enemy's hair in and just start to stab it with needles or make them into spoons and put them into a pickle jar. My friends need to be punished. <laughs> I love that scene in that movie. Voodoo or voodoo, which I will explain why this in a minute, originated in the ancient kingdom of Dahomey, which is present day Benin and derives from the word Thon, which means God or spirit or deity. Voodoo is one of hundreds of traditional African religions, but the voodoo we know today derives from two forms, Haitian voodoo and Louisiana voodoo. I'm talking about voodoo and it's fun. Haitian voodoo developed in Haiti between the 16th and 19th centuries amid the Atlantic slave trade among Afro-Haitian communities and arose from the process of combining several different religions from West and Central Africa and Roman Catholicism as well as Freemasonry. You can, come on, put your cute face up on here. This is my mom, mom's dog, Apollo. It is from the slave trade and the Haitian Revolution that Louisiana voodoo, also known as New Orleans voodoo, comes from. Voodoo was never banned in the United States, but it was very restricted from laws regulating where and when Black people could gather. It was practiced secretly and spread up the Mississippi River into Missouri. Now, voodoo, no matter where, is a religion. Haitian voodoo is identified as Haiti's national religion as well as a traditional religion. Louisiana voodoo is also a religion but is characterized as an African Creole, which is any ethnic group formed during the European colonial era and an African American religion. There are several different spellings of voodoo, but this specific spelling is sometimes used to tell apart the Louisiana voodoo from the Haitian voodoo. I've never said voodoo so much in my life and I'm loving this right now. It's also the derogatory Western version. From this point on, I'm going to talk about Louisiana voodoo, which is what Mary does. There's no formal theology of Louisiana voodoo, but the core beliefs is that one God does not interfere in daily lives, but spirits do. To connect with these spirits, it's done through many rituals, such as dance, music, chanting, drums, and snakes. <laughs> The practice involves working with roots and herbs, honoring and worshiping their ancestors, and creating and using charms and amulets. People would seek out voodoo practitioners or conjurers for spiritual intervention or protection in their lives, ranging from political to love. Though most of these practitioners used those powers for good, of course, there are those who used it for bad. Voodoo has a very bad reputation of being associated with black magic, witchcraft, and hexing. It has also been denounced as devil worshiping. I mean, if you've seen The Princess and the Frog, and can I just say, doesn't Mary give off Mama Odie vibes? 
Mary was reported to have an extensive background in African spirituality. She was drawn to it after the death of her mother, and she underwent the teachings of a well-known Senegalese conjurer or root worker, voodoo doctor, Dr. John Bayou, or just Dr. John, sometime in the 1820s. Mary uniquely combined the beliefs of voodoo and the traditions of Catholicism, using holy water, incense, statues of saints, and Christian prayers. This is called voodoo Catholicism, which is a hybrid of voodoo. By using this hybrid, Mary helped make voodoo and hoodoo, which is basically African-American folk magic, more acceptable to upper-class New Orleans. She performed her services in three places, at Lake Pontchartrain, in Congo Square, and in her own home on St. Anne Street. With her helping those in the upper class, it did not take long for her to dominate the culture and society in New Orleans. By 1930, she was one of several voodoo queens, and she quickly became the voodoo queen of New Orleans. That's just so freaking cool baller, bro. She took charge of public voodoo rituals and ceremonies in Congo Square, which was one of a few places that people of all races could mingle freely. Just the fact that I said that is really freaking sad. She did other services at Maison Blanche, or French for the White House, which was built specifically as a secret place for voodoo meetings and lovers between white men and black women. And the fact that I just said those two things is really sad. People sought out Mary to get her advice on family and domestic disputes, marital affairs, judicial issues, finances, childbearing, health, and of course, good luck. She would then give the people seeking her advice or protection spiritual objects, like powder that could cure ailments, candles, and herbs. She made really good money by selling Gris Gris, which is an African amulet that is believed to protect the wearer from evil and or brings luck. Ceremonies at her home would sometimes take place in her backyard during she would conjure the spirit of the great zombie, the deity Dembalo Weto, or just Dembala. He would come in the form of a snake. The amount of times I saw snakes during this research, I did not appreciate. She held major ceremonies at Lake Pontchartrain, specifically a shore called Bayou St. John's. Curious white people would sneak into the woods to see these ceremonies, and they would often report exuberant tales of what they saw. And when I say exuberant, I mean exuberant. -ah. So not saying that some of the stuff that voodoo does is not a little bit nuts, but these are like... The local newspaper referred to Mary once as the notorious hag who reigns over the ignorant and superstitious as the queen of the voodoos. Do you really have to call her a hag? She was feared for her power with many stories of what happened to anyone who offended her. I mean, mess around to find out, bruh. But at the same time, Mary helped the sick. She was regarded as a living saint because of her work. The rich and poor sought Mary's mystical powers to gain fame and fortune, exact revenge, control lovers, and become pregnant. With all this fame and respect Mary was gaining, rivals came right along with it. Before Mary came to power, two women were voodoo queens before her. The first was Sanite Day Day. She ruled for about several years, then Mary Salope surpassed her and she introduced Mary to the inner workings of voodoo and gave her more fundamental teachings. After making everyone bend the knee to her, Mary reigned unchallenged for the next 20 years, up until 1850 when Rosalie, another Creole woman, tried to challenge Mary's position. Rosalie, to make a sense of fear and awe, she placed a massive life-size wooden doll covered in beads and intricate carvings into her yard and said that it had been brought over from Africa. I wish I could find that photo. But when the voodoo community began to have fear and respect for Rosalie because of the doll, Mary stole it. I have no idea why. Of course, she was taken to court by Rosalie, but Mary used her persuasive powers and influence to have Rosalie's doll permanently removed. 
I don't know what that adds to Mary's story. I'm just saying that I love that. That's baller. Mary continued her voodoo and charitable work and surrounded herself with her family. Her youngest daughter, Mary Philomene, she became known as Mary II, started a relationship with Emile Alexandre Legendry, a white man and 32 years older than her. They got married, had seven kids, and they were all considered colored. And the two stayed together till Emile passed in 1872. Marie Eloise got into a relationship at a young age with a free man of color named Pierre Crokery. He was a commission broker, builder, and architect who was 24 years older than Mary, and he died in 1857. Mary and her partner Christoph were considered domestic partners because they never married, but they stayed and lived together for about 36 years till his death on June 22, 1855. Around 1875, Mary did her last performance and there she announced her retirement. But like Tom Brady, she didn't fully retire. It's a really stupid joke, but I like it. She continued to work with the poor and attended to prisoners that were sentenced to death. Rumors say that some of the prisoners that she helped were given poisons or other lethal substances before going into the gallows. These rumors were never proven, but Philomene later confirmed during an interview with the Picayune that her mother only did Catholic traditions during the visits and that Mary would also help prepare the prisoners' last meals and pray with them. Mary also helped those she favored get commutations or pardons of their sentences, and she was often successful. Mary Catherine Levu Paris Glapion died on June 15, 1881, at the age of 79 or 86, in her sleep at her home on St. Anne Street. Her funeral was lavish and was attended by diverse members of the voodoo community and the white elites. News of her death was in newspapers, not only in Louisiana, but the Staunton Spectator in Virginia, to the Omaha Daily Bee in Nebraska, to several newspapers in Minnesota, to even the New York Times, all of which described her as, quote, woman of great beauty, intellect, and charisma, who was also poyous, charitable, and a skilled herbal healer, end quote. Mary is buried in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1, which is the Glapinyong family crypt in New Orleans. Every year, thousands of visitors visit her tomb and decorate her plot with spiritual decor, flowers, candles, money, and various personal items. After her death, voodoo in New Orleans took a dive as more people began to take part in economic and social standards. So the need for ancient traditions and rituals decreased. It is thought that Mary II took on her mother's position, but it is said that Maliva Latour was Maria's successor. Don't know when this started, but some tourists draw an X on her tomb in following a decades-old tradition that if people wanted Mary to grant them a wish, they draw three X's on the tomb, spin three times, knock on the tomb, and yell out their wish. If it was granted, go back, circle the X, and leave an offering for Mary. In 1982, punk rock band The Misfits were arrested and accused of attempting to exhume Mary from her grave after a local concert. On December 17, 2013, her tomb was vandalized by being painted over with pink latex paint. Luckily, the paint was able to be removed because the tomb is made of plaster, but there were so much more vandalisms and destruction of her tomb that as of March 1st, 2015, public access is no longer allowed to St. Louis Cemetery No. 1, and you can only enter with a tour guide. Although Mary has been called a witch in pop culture, she has also been called a voodoo priestess and is often still described as a voodoo queen. And because she is the voodoo queen, she has been in countless pop culture references. She has been in all of these songs, 
like, holy crap, been the subject of a 1999 musical, inspired a number of fictional characters in novels, short stories, and poems. A character named Mary Laveau is loosely based on her in the Marvel comics. TV characters based on Marie have been in Lost Girl, Young Sheldon, and Legends of Tomorrow, and most awesomely, she has been portrayed by Angela Bassett in American Horror Story, Coven, and Apocalypse. Okay, there we go. The story of the voodoo queen. Originally, I was going to do a witch, but the witch that I picked, her story was a lot more complicated and convoluted than what I thought it was. And so I had to switch gears, found her, love it. If you learned something today, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And while you're down there, please leave a friendly comment. I'll be back next week with another video. And until then, don't be well behaved. You just might make her story. See you next time, guys. Hey.